as recorded on 2022. First is what is population policy? This policy is not any abstract term as my policy is to always tell the truth. A population policy is a document which has a list of the measures that the government intends to take in a stepwise manner to achieve the desired change in the country's population. So it's clear that if there is a timetable with stepwise timetable then there are deadlines for each step. These deadlines have a long term goal that is the ultimate goal which we want to achieve using this population policy an optimal population size and an optimal age structure that leads to maximum productivity. So what is the change that we need to have and objectives are the short term goals you can say each step that is stated the objective of each step towards achieving the long term goal. The population policy for India in 2000, it aims at reducing, first reducing and then stabilizing the growth rate of the population. In some low population countries, a population policy may actually be aimed at increasing the population to optimal levels. For example, by promoting immigration into the country or promoting large families. The so National Population Policy 2000 India the long term objective or the goal is to achieve a stable population by 2045. What is the meaning of this stable population? It is a level which is consistent with sustainable economic growth, social development and environmental protection. Medium term objectives is to bring the total fertility rate to replacement level. What does that mean? That means that translates into a net reproduction rate of 1 and it was supposed to be achieved by 2010. Immediate objectives were to address the unmet need for contraception and the unmet need for healthcare infrastructure and healthcare personnel. And another immediate objective was to provide integrated service delivery for basic reproductive and child healthcare. That means that at single place a woman or a family come for can come for child health care, maternal health care, mother's health care, as well as family planning measures. The national population policy cites some reasons for the population growth in India. Unless we know the reason for population growth, we cannot attack those reasons. We cannot tackle them. So it has to first identify what are the reasons for population growth. The well, first reason it cites is that a large section of population in, the, in India is, a, is in the reproductive age group. This is because of the high birth rates in the past. This is the population pyramid long back of India. Of India. We can see that a large section is in the childhood age group in the past. This was because of high birth rates. The present age pyramids is seen something like this. We can see that the largest population is in the reproductive age group, in the adults of reproductive age group. So because we have the highest proportion of this age group, they will continue to reproduce and the population will keep on increasing. This means that the momentum of population increase will continue for some years to come. Second reason, a high unmet need for contraception. Unmet need for contraception means those couples who do not intend to have children but even then they are not using any contraception. The reasons can be anything. Third reason cited by the policy that families want to have higher number of children as an insurance against infant and child deaths. Infant mortality rate has been high in the past in the country. It has decreased to a large extent, but it is higher than many developed countries. So people want to have higher number of children as an insurance against infant mortality and child mortality. Fourth reason, early age at marriage. This results in early onset of reproduction and such families also tend to have a higher number of children and at smaller intervals. Fifth reason cited was 
that there is less spacing between births. One third of the births occur at an interval of less than two years of the previous birth. After looking at the reasons for population growth, the inference is that if we need to stabilize the population, we need to achieve a certain level of basic health services, health, and not just family planning measures. How? We will talk about it. But keeping these two things above in mind, the national socio-demographic goals were formulated. As you can see that health measures are as important as family planning measures. So social demographic goals were for achieving health and social welfare in a stepwise manner and these were to be reached by 2010. So the national socio demographic goals are listed here. First is to address the unmet need for reproductive and child health services. We talked about unmet needs of contraception. Similarly, unmet needs for reproductive health care, for child health care, for child health care services and infrastructure that is which includes the physical structures and trained personnel in child health care. So for controlling the population, first we need to have better health facilities, better reproductive health facilities and better child health services. Second, to make school education free and compulsory up to age 14. So that all the children have basic education, they understand the importance of having lesser number of children, of spacing the children and improving the status of the girl child. Third, to reduce infant mortality rate to less than 30 per thousand live births. So lower infant mortality rates, lesser the desire to have higher number of children. Reduce maternal mortality ratio to less than 100 per lakh live births. Achieve universal immunization of children against all the vaccine preventable diseases, thereby decreasing child mortality and diseases. Six, promoting delayed marriage for girls. It has been written introduced in the parliament to increase the marriage age, the legal marriage age to 21 for both girls and boys. Seventh, to achieve 80% institutional deliveries and 100% deliveries by trained persons. Means the deliveries which are occurring, lesser and lesser deliveries to occur at home more than 80% deliveries to occur in the institution and have all the 100% deliveries even if they are occurring at home to be conducted by a trained person. A trained person means nobody less than an auxiliary nerve midwife. Eighth goal, universal access to information and counseling of contraceptive methods and services provision of these contraceptive methods with a wide basket of choices of contraceptives. Ninth, 100% registration of birth, deaths, marriage, pregnancy, etc. Tenth goal, to contain the spread of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS. Eleventh, to prevent and control the communicable diseases in general means improve the general health of the population. Integrating inner systems of medicine in the provision of reproductive and child health services so as to increase the access to medical systems and many rural households have more faith in indigenous systems of medicine of India. So including them in provision of reproductive and child health services including contraceptive also. Thirteenth goal is to keep promoting the small family norm while doing all the above. So if we are doing all the above to improve the general health of the population so as to decrease the urge to have higher number of children simultaneously keep promoting have a small family have a small family as we are achieving the above finally converge the related social sector programs which will affect the social status of women making family welfare a people-centered program so if we need to educate a person then the doctor can refer to the required educational program in the area. So there's a need to converge all the social sector programs, education sector, social security, medical, all the sectors need to come together. So it was anticipated that if the population policy was properly implemented in a proper step as manner on timely, in a timely ma manner, then the population of the country in 2010 would be only 
1107 million as against the projected 1162 million as was predicted by the census figures but in actuality the population was even higher as per the 2011 census than the projected population and it was found to be 1210 million so strategic themes are the strategies which the population policy intends to use so as to be effective where all do we need to strike is called strategic themes first decentralization of the planning and implementation of the program that is delegating the planning and and implementing the policy to the village level panchayats that is they will plan how many contraceptives do we need how much of child care do we need how many clinics we need and then passing out these plans to the higher levels then the central government at the highest level will give the budget and plan but all this planning will initiate from the bottom the decentralized planning especially the women member of panchayats second strategic theme to converge service delivery at village level we have already talked about integration and convergence of all the sectors that is whatever is needed by asha to convince a couple to accept some family planning measure to take the child for vaccination these should be in reach she should be able to provide them educational material she should be able to provide them the media messages so convergence of all the service delivery at the village level all health related services both government and private to be provided at one center for easy accessibility that is convergence of social sector at village level third strategic theme is to empower women so that their health and nutrition improves their education improves so this will lead to empowerment of the girl child and that will raise their social status as well as their decision making power fourth strategic theme to improve child health care and child survival especially neonatal care now as you improve the child care first is the child mortality decreases then infant mortality decreases finally the most difficult part of the child mortality is the neonatal mortality to take care of so now we have to focus on the neonatal care to decrease the mortality at this stage by universal immunization that will prevent child deaths control of childhood diarrhea which used to cause death by dehydration control of diarrhea and preventing deaths by using oral dehydration therapies managing acute respiratory infections childhood diarrhea and childhood pneumonia were the highest cause of child deaths they still are but they are now decreased massive doses of vitamin a and food supplements to improve the immunity of children fifth meeting the unmet needs for family welfare services we have discussed the unmet needs why how to by increasing the distribution of contraceptives by increasing the free supply as well as by social marketing social marketing is also a term which needs explanation elsewhere expanding the availability of safe abortion care sex strategic thing covering the underserved population groups where the medical care has not yet reached completely so they continue to be ignorant about the contraception about the child vaccination about child survival for services like urban slums these areas have been identified to be underserved tribal communities hill area population displaced and migrant population adolescents whose health needs both general and sexual health needs have been ignored in the past for example preventing unwanted pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases these have been ignored in case of adolescents hence they were underserved seventh strategic theme increasing the participation of men in planned parenthood that is if you want to have a child or if you want to limit the family size the participation of men is to be increased planning families involvement of men in planning the number of children and supporting the contraceptive use by the couple helping the pregnant women stay healthy now producing a healthy child is also reproductive health if a couple wants to have child and is not able to conceive then helping the couple to conceive and to ultimately result in a healthy mother and child is also reproductive health 
so increasing the participation of men in helping the pregnant women stay healthy arranging for skilled care during delivery planning where to deliver the child planning blood donator if uh, required planning where the child will be delivered who will deliver the child how will the wife be transferred transported to that place so arranging the skilled care at the time of delivery the men should also be involved in it currently now most of the sterilization surgeries more than 97% are in women are in vasectomies so there is a need to popularize vasectomies because vasectomy especially the no scalpel vasectomy is very simple to perform totally safe in men eight strategic theme is to diverse healthcare providers we discussed previously including the indigenous systems of medicine as well as accrediting accrediting private medical practitioners and assigning them defined beneficiaries to provide reproductive health care reviving the system of registered medical practitioners which has been abolished ninth strategic theme collaboration with ngos non governmental organization and private sector because private sector account for 75% of the healthcare expenditure in the indian population tenth theme is to mainstream indian system of medicine and homeopathy this will expand the pool of effective healthcare providers and acceptance also 11th strategic theme contraceptive technology so do research to produce more different types of contraceptives and the research on reproductive and child health that is first is newer contraceptives second is research on methods of communication so as to improve contraceptive acceptance especially among men and research to see how many people are accepted contraceptives and how many are reluctant so both technology research and operational research to be encouraged for this we have international institute of population sciences the population research centers in addition demographic data is provided regularly through following surveys in the country national health and family welfare surveys which is done every 5 years district surveys is done every 2 years in covers say 50% of the district per year so every 2 years all the district are covered facility surveys that means survey for assessing the infrastructure and services this is done one district per month what is the status of the facility health facilities 11th strategic theme is provision for older population because it is if it is ensured that old age will be cared for this will reduce the incentive for having large families because as a insurance for care during old age so we can have training for providing geriatric health cares we will have people schemes that will make the elderly economically self reliant and other things which can make older age more independent and healthy finally and not the least information education communication most important part if people are aware of the need to limit their families of the advantages of that and how to do it then only the program will reach somewhere so family welfare messages in local languages by local media getting public support is an important part so demonstration of support to the small family norm in the form of personal examples also by political leaders community leaders professional leaders religious leaders film stars sports personalities opinion makers influencers etc should be ensured following new structures were recommended for implementation of the policy national commission of on population should be made which would be presided over by the prime minister state commission or union territory union territory commission on population presided over by the chief minister coordination cell in the planning commission for looking after intersectoral coordination we already discussed about convergence and integration of various social educational health etc sectors to come together for to ensuring in general health and for ensuring family health reproductive health and finally contraceptive health technology mission 
in the department of family welfare to develop and implement technology and to give technology support for reproductive and child health programs and information education and communication for use of technology in iec other promotional and motivational measures for adoption of small family norms are suggested in the population policy which can be adopted to promote small families honoring panchayats which have ex exemplary performance in introducing small family norm in the village in introducing wide space literacy having a low infant mortality rate and achieving a low birth rate these panchayats can be honored nationally then maternity benefit schemes for having the first child after 19 years of age and for first two children this was already existing so it is to continue health insurance for acceptors of terminal methods of contraception rewards for couples who qualify the following criteria of an ideal couple having creches and child care center in rural areas and urban slums so that women can be economically productive and have a productive life then a wider and affordable choice of contraceptives soft loans for village entrepreneurs especially to run ambulance services for pregnant women for uh, internal care vocational training for girls leading to self employment so that they are busy they have some kind of employment they earn money and not simply engage in increasing the family size only soft loans to the anm so that they can purchase motor bopeds cycles etc to increase their mobility to improve the access to underserved families thank you